Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I just want to talk about what paint is used to make abstract art, or at least the paint that I've used to make abstract art, and kind of give you my experience, and just talk about the different types of paint that there are, and how you can kind of work with them, or if you're looking to use, you know, if you're kind of looking into abstract art and kind of getting into it, you know, what to kind of look out for. So I'll talk about the two main types of paint and then I'm gonna talk about the types of paint that I've used and kind of my experience with those different types of paint. So traditionally, there are two main types of paint, oil paint and acrylic. The difference being that oil paint is based is oil based so it's it's a little more waxy and it takes longer to dry although it is a little more pliable and you can kind of mix it a little easier because of the oils uh, and sometimes it, it tends to give a little more bit of vibrancy uh, to the paint itself now acrylic is water based so it tends to dry faster um, but it tends to not always be as vibrant as oil there are some better acrylic brands that do look pretty pretty good they're pretty vibrant and they have good color fastness so that once they fade and they dry they keep that initial color the problem with cheaper acrylics is that you know they'll look good when you put it on but as time goes on it either looks you know really plasticky or it loses a lot of that initial color so it's not as vibrant as it was when it first went on um, so those are the two big things is, is acrylic and oil uh, the the biggest uh, kind of the thing that I would say with in working with them is that oil gives you a little bit more I guess flexibility as far as you know kind of combining them or some of the things you can do by thinning it out whereas acrylic is a little more limited in some of the additives you can add to kind of either stretch it out or to to change it uh, in a way that you know makes sense for you as far as changing it with additives like pouring mediums or uh, thinning things stuff like that with acrylic you can you can do water and you can do some some other mediums but oil I think gives you a little more flexibility in that uh, but as far as color goes and, and working with them you can make a lot of the same type of paintings with acrylic that you could oil um, I think that oil tends to you know be able to blend a little bit easier so if you're making you know um, abstract landscapes or something it blends a little bit easier than acrylic does but again it, it depends a lot on the technique you're using and the paint that you're using itself so those are the two traditional types of painting or paint um, and and a lot of paints are broken down into those categories but then outside of that those are the two traditional main ones that a lot of main artists tend to use Outside of that, there are a lot of other types of variations of paint that you could use to make abstract art. I mean, honestly, you could really use a lot of different things. Um, I'm going to cover a couple that I don't personally use, but to give you ideas of what you could use for abstract art. Um, you could use spray paint if you really wanted to. I know people who, who use spray paint as a medium. There's a, there's a guy and his tag on Instagram is I'm Sloth. He's actually a artist here in Arizona. I think his name is uh, Tommy Ham. I believe if I got it wrong I apologize but he uses spray paint and he makes these really cool like almost like mural type paintings and so he'll spray paint it and then he'll go back over and outline those paintings in Sharpie and it looks awesome and it's kind of abstract but it's also you can tell what it is so uh, you know there's these like really vibrant popish kind of paintings that he does with spray paint so spray paint is a medium um, you could also use things like alcohol inks to, you know, to paint with. I see a lot of people doing abstract art with alcohol ink. Um, I've never used it, although I've seen a lot of people who use it. It looks phenomenal. Um, so you would use like alcohol ink that you can get from a craft store and put it on something like, uh, I think it's papyrus paper. I've never used it, but I've seen a lot of people use it. So I think it's papyrus or papaya or Pio, or I, I wish I knew, I apologize. But if you saw around that area, you'd know what I was talking about. So you can use alcohol ink as well. It's another thing a lot of people just pour it on and it makes these splashes and it looks almost like watercolor. Watercolor is another thing that you could use for abstract or gauche as well. I think it's pronounced gauche. Um, gauche is kind of like in between watercolor and like acrylic. So it's kind of water-based. Um, it's a little thicker than watercolor but it's not as thick as acrylic, so it kind of gives you a little bit of body. Um, 
but it's it, the look of it is kind of like watercolor. So those are also paints that you could use. With watercolor, I mean, you, you've probably seen watercolor paints. It gives you that big, nice um, coloration on the abstract. So when you go to use it, you know, it will fill up a large area. It's not very thick. So watercolor tends to, to fill the painting very, it's very light coloring, um, but it will fill that painting very easily. Uh, and there are some phenomenal watercolor paintings out there. So watercolor is also, um, you know, a type of paint that you could use for abstract art. A lot of it comes down to what you're trying to do with that paint. So a lot of artists out there, you know, they, they know the medium that they're working with and they just know how to work with that medium. So those are some ideas outside of just the main two of acrylic and oil. Um, and then some of the other things you could use, you know, spray paint, watercolor, uh, gouache, or alcohol ink. There's a lot of opportunity out there. If any of those sound interesting, just look them up on YouTube or Instagram or something like that. And you can see a lot of people doing amazing work with this. There's also a uh, resin. So people will do like paint inside resin and then pour resin on something and that paint will spread out with the resin over the surface so that it fills it and becomes an abstract painting. So that is also another idea. So pigment in resin, resin um, just another idea. So let's now talk about some of the paints that I personally use or have used to make abstract art and kind of the effect that they've had. So I'm going to start with the things that I've used before and kind of work my way into what I currently use now. Um, so first let's start with this. So you can't really read it. This is Artist Loft. I, I don't recommend Artist Loft. Um, I don't for this fluid. Um, just because it, it broke up on me like when I went to pour it it kind of chunked up so I don't recommend it. Um, but let's talk about it. So this is fluid acrylic. So it is acrylic paint that's basically already diluted. Um, you would do this for like poured paintings if you were going to do poured paintings. So with fluid acrylics, you would pour them on, you would pour a bunch of fluid acrylics on, and then you could like tilt the canvas or you could have it up already and use for, you know, the fluid acrylic to kind of make these lines on the painting or whatever effect you're going for. But fluid acrylic is basically already diluted acrylic paint. Um, and so, you know, if you're doing pour type paintings, which is what I've used it for, that actually, it works really well. Um, but I would recommend probably a higher end brand than something like Artist Loft, which is like the, uh, the Michaels brand, the Michaels Craft Store brand of paint. I would recommend something better, probably Golden. Golden is phenomenal. I mean, they have good paints. It's more price, you know, the price is higher, but you get what you pay for. You really do get a quality paint. So I would recommend Golden for fluid acrylics um, if you're doing like poured paintings or something like that. Uh, next, let's talk about uh, heavy body acrylic. So again, this is acrylic paint, but unlike the normal acrylic, which I'm gonna get to, which is normally uh, soft body, this is uh, the heavy body acrylic paint. So heavy body acrylic paint is really for definition. So it's thicker than something like regular um, acrylic paint, which I'm gonna come to in, in the next second. Um, so this is heavy body acrylic paint. This is Liquitex, again, Golden, other brands, they make heavy body. Uh, Windsor Newton is another one. And the heavy body is for definition, like I said. So like if you were using a palette knife, you would tend to use something like heavy body paint because it's got it's thicker and it's got body to it. So you would use the palette knife to kind of scrape that heavy body on there to give it a definition. For example, if you were if you made a painting of say a, like a, a landscape and it had a tree on it, you could do the tree on with regular you know acrylic paint and it would be kind of flat. And then you could go back and use like a palette knife. Uh, for the heavy body to go over like say the leaves or something to really kind of give it thickness or a definition on top of that soft body acrylic or you could just just use heavy body depending on what you were doing but again this is thicker than normal acrylic so it it gives you more definition and it's gonna you know it's gonna give it kind of a 3d feel and look to it so that's what the heavy body acrylic is for um you wouldn't most people i don't think would use this for a whole painting um but for areas of definition for sure uh all right next we're going to get to regular acrylic paint or soft body acrylic so this this is when you when you hear of acrylic paintings 
Most of them are something like this, where it's Liquitech Basics, or it's Windsor Newton again, or, or Golden. Um, these are just soft body acrylics. And so this is what most painters will use, especially professional painters will probably gear towards uh, Windsor Newton or um, Golden because they keep that color fastness or the steadfastness of the color. Once it's applied, you know, it tends to keep that color, whatever was applied, is the color that it dries with. Um, if you do something with like Liquitex Basics, it's a decent paint. The problem is, is the color you see in the tube isn't necessarily the color it looks once it's dried. Um, but anyway, most painting, the, the, the advantage to acrylic is that it's, it's versatile in how much you use with like water. So a lot of people will thin down acrylic to kind of cover a whole painting and they'll do a thin layer of it. It's very easy to dilute and still get like a decent coverage without it kind of breaking up. Um, or you could just use it thick and then you could apply lots of layers and then it would almost be like a heavy body only you know it's it's more versatile like that so it's versatile in that way um, like diluting or you know kind of layering to kind of get definition so but acrylic I, I like acrylic I, it's very easy to work with um, it for the price it it's usually very affordable to to kind of get into acrylic it's very forgiving the only problem that I have with acrylic is that it dries very fast so especially here in Arizona where I live it's hot like it's hot at least six months out of the year so the acrylic paint is going to dry very fast it will even dry in the tubes um, or it'll start to like dry and clump up in the tubes that's a problem for me but if you store your stuff in a place that's kind of like climate controlled or cooler that's not an issue just letting you know that acrylic does dry faster than oil so like a, acrylic can dry in minutes maybe an hour or something like that whereas oil can take hours so just something to keep in mind so that's you know I do use acrylics now just not a whole lot because I tend to use gloss enamel so I'm gonna get to that uh, so finally is gloss enamel this is the type of paint that I personally use gloss enamel is the type of paint that Jackson Pollock used that's kind of how I got into it um, I just kind of fell into it like I, I was really interested and then I found a place that sold it so I started using it fell in love with it gloss enamel is basically a high gloss house paint and I'm going to show you, uh, basically, this, this is what it looks like. And uh, this can is kind of covered in paint. So I don't know if I have one that says gloss enamel on it. Let me see. Here we go. All right. So this is, this is from a local brand called Dunn Edwards. They're in Arizona. I don't know where they are elsewhere because they're in the southwest uh, United States. But anyway, it, it says right here, high gloss. So this is what you're looking for, high gloss enamel. So it even says it right on the can. And it even says uh, alkyde. So alkyde is just the type of paint that it is. Um, so alkyde paint or enamel, that is the type of paint that I use. So it's basically, again, high gloss house paint. It's what Jackson Pollock used. So I kind of got into that because of that. I was interested in it, tried it, loved it. The reason I love um, the house paint, the high gloss enamel, is because it the, the color is amazing. Like this, this was gloss enamel like it just looks so it's already like shiny so you don't have to add a high gloss like varnish to it or any kind of varnish because one it's already high gloss and two it's already protective because it's house paint so it's meant to last you know 30 plus years so that's why i use gloss enamel the the challenges with gloss enamel especially what i use so there are there is an oil and a water-based um gloss enamel because there's there's oil and water-based house paint and I'm going to show you one that's, that's uh, actually oil. So this is Rust-Oleum. Um, I have used this. This is Rust-Oleum and it's metallic. It's silver. And this is oil based. And so I didn't know that when I bought it. And then when I went to paint, um, I put paint on top of that paint and it separated. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I looked and it, you know, it even says that you, uh, you have to use thinner if you want to dilute it. So I didn't understand. I didn't know that when I bought it. I should have paid attention. Didn't. But rust oleum is uh, is oil based. That's fine. I just wasn't expecting it because I'm so used to using water based paint. So again, the best way to look at it is if you use house paint like this, um, same properties as oil paint. Like if you were to buy it at a craft store, the house paint is the same properties as you would the uh, the acrylic paint. You can dilute it with water. 
the shine is really good. However, because it's house paint, it's very liquidy. So if you ever use it to make, say, like a Jackson, Jackson Pollock style painting, just know it's very, it's already thin, like it's already, you know, very liquidy, but you can dilute it to kind of get more out of it. Uh, but the shine is, uh, is amazing. What I will say is it will destroy anything it touches. So you don't want to get it on your driveway or your walls or anything else that you don't want it on because it won't come off. Just giving you a warning now. I've already ruined my driveway, but I'm at peace with it. So just, just give me that heads up. But that's the type of paint that I use. And I just figured I would kind of tell you that about that paint because that's what I use to make my paintings. You just have to learn your medium. So you can use any of the paints I've listed, whether it's normal acrylic or oil, gloss enamel, fluid acrylics, uh, heavy bodies, alcohol inks, spray paint, watercolor gouache. Those are all, they all have kind of their, their pluses and minuses or pros and cons. What I would say is if any of those sound interesting to you, look it up. Look up other artists using those types of paints. I don't use everything. I just figured I'd give you some ideas. Um, look up artists that are using that kind of medium that you're interested in and then learn, you know, watch them to kind of pick up on ideas of how to use it. Really, you're not going to get a sense of it until you use that paint. That's the biggest piece of advice I can give you is just like me. I started with acrylic and then I got away from it because it just didn't do enough for me. Um, and then when I found gloss enamel, it's very unique. You know, not a lot of people do this. I, very few people use gloss enamel for their paintings. Um, so, I, I mean, I kind of have an idea of it because it's one, it's unique. So I kind of fell into it. But two, I've been using it for a couple of years now. So I, I have a good idea of how it's going to perform and and what I'm trying to accomplish. So you really aren't going to get it until you start using it. But if any of those sound interesting, just look up pictures of other what artists have done and see if it's something interested. You're not going to know until you start getting into it, whether you like that type of painting or not. But I figured I'd just make this video for you to give you some ideas of the types of paint you can use to make abstract paintings. I really hope that this video, um, you know, made sense or was helpful and, you know, that it kind of gave you an idea both of a paint you can use, but also what I tend to use. Um, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe it and, uh, you know, check out my other videos. So that's it. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.